It's okay, it's okay, I'll edit that bit out. There, that's better. Right, uh, good five minutes of faffing, I'm afraid. I'll sing a song or play some music or something when I'm set up. We have little Ass Lassie off, uh, oh no, she's not off nursery, no. Babysitter is off today, poor grandma is poorly. So I'm just gonna take five minutes to get the things done that I could not get done when beautiful little Lassie was here. And that. Have you seen that you need um, a handful of spice and actually a baking tray to put your plate on would be a very good idea as well because we're going to do some sprinkling. Um, oh yeah, that's what I'm looking for. after the lesson and I'll be dead cross. <gasps> yeah, I found them! Oh, yes, totally worth a little bit of faffing. Found the things. Hello, three people who are watching this live. That's nice and always motivating when there's a couple of people watching live. Um, still, still fab it. Oh, here it is. Yay, I found this other thing. Ah, oh, amazing. Now all I need to do is take my woolly hat off because I've been in the garden and we can get started. Okay, yeah. Can you guess what my uh, daughter's watching while I do this lesson? They are the gummy bears! Best theme tune to any cartoon ever. Alright. <coughs> Obligatory nose blow, and then I will cease this nonsense. <coughs> that we will teach the lesson. Because you, you're the hardcore ones. You're the people who come <laughs> and watch without comments. You just want to learn. No, stop wait. Stop keeping us waiting. Okay. Uh, and that's kicked out over there. And I can get it. Alright. <clears throat> I'm flipping. I'm fl oh, wait. oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. No, I need to go and get my computer because it, you might have commented to say who you are. So sorry. Oh, this is just an 
Computer. So sorry. I can't go back to classroom teaching again, can I? I've got too used to being able to faff on. Can you imagine? They'd be like hurling themselves out of windows. Paper aeroplanes all over the place. Okay. Just going to pull up the little post that I put on my Facebook page saying that if anyone wants to have a chat or ask a question or say, Larry, you're running backwards again by accident, then they can. Ah, okay, here it is. Okay, I'm actually very excited about this lesson. I've learned some things, as usual. Okay, good, no comments. Well, that was a waste of time, let's go. <laughs> Bouncing here and there and everywhere. Right, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm so, so sorry. I'm flipping right now. Here we go, I'm gonna flip. You ready? Let's do this. Hello, hello everybody. My name is Lara, this is Theatre of Science. If you are watching this, uh, then you are in the future, probably. So hello and welcome. It's the last reproduction lesson. Oh, finally, we are doing sexual reproduction in plants. So we've done a lot about sexual reproduction in humans, quick recap, all right? So it takes two humans to make one new human. Let's say that two colored dots is like a full set of DNA, all the stuff you need to make a person. So the female human with a female reproductive system produces an egg, a cell, a sex cell, an egg which has half the DNA needed to make a person, 50%. And then the male person, the male reproductive system, they produce a cell called the sperm that has the other, another half, so half the stuff needed to make a person. And then we say that the sperm fertilizes the egg, don't we? If you've seen any previous lessons, then the, the sperm, yes, the sperm goes into the female reproductive system, finds the egg, fertilizes it, and ta -da! You get a cell with all the DNA required to make a person. New person grows, new person, not identical to other parents. Plants do this as well. Last week you looked at how plants can reproduce only using one, like themselves, amazing. But they, plants also do sexual reproduction. Basically sperm and egg coming together, whole new plant, different set of DNA. So how do they do it? Well, oh, my scientist friends, we need to learn some words. So I'm a physics specialist and so I, I can't hide my groaning from this. But once you've learned them, and I've got a drama game which is going to help us learn them, then it's a good way to sound impressive. Um, it all begins really with the anther. So the yellow kind of balls surround, like inside the flower that have got loads of like yellow dust on them. They are the anthers. That yellow dust is pollen. Pollen uh, has got sperm in it. It's not just the sperm cells. It's like a little kind of waterproof coating with sperm inside it. So the anther is kind of like the testis of the plant, I want to say. It's like the male part of the plant that produces the sperm. So if you ever touched a lily yeah, and got like yellow powder all over yourself, that's the anther. And the anther is on the end of a little stalky stick, which for reasons biologists have called the filament. Seems like an awful long word for stick, attaching the anther to the flower. But anyway, so we've got the anther that contains the pollen that has sperm in it. The filament is the stick. And the whole thing together is called a stamen. Stamen. So that's one stamen, two stamen, the sixth stamen on this diagram of my flower here. Uh, and then, so the point is that the pollen comes off the anther and has to make its way to this thing in the, right in the middle, slightly higher than the anther, which is the female part of the flower. This top bit here, can't quite see in this diagram, but what I've labelled as the stigma is just the very top bit of this long protrusion which is sticky it's a sticky stigma and it's the female part so the pollen has to land on the sticky stigma and then what happens is totally amazing so you know i said the pollen grain isn't just sperm there's another cell in the pollen grain which it and it grows a pollen tube all the way down the stigma through this bit which we'll name later through right to the bottom to this kind of bulbous bit here which is called the ovary, word we've heard before, right? The female body, the ovaries 
um, store eggs. So the plant ovary, yeah, it's just the same thing. These little bits will, again, we'll name later, but this pollen tube goes all the way down into the ovary and explodes and releases sperm and eventually fertilizes the, the, the like plant's eggs that are waiting inside here. Whew. So quite a lot of words. Filament, long stem, anther, the thing on the top that makes the pollen with sperm in it. Stamen is the filament and the anther all together. Stigma, the sticky bit on the top, which is the female part of the plant and the ovary. This bulbous thing at the bottom. How are we gonna learn them? Well, luckily for you, I got a science degree. I also got a drama degree. We're gonna do some drama games. That will solve our problem. So, <clears throat> don't think anyone's ever said that about a drama game, have they? Um, I'm gonna do an action and say a word. And you just have to do the action as well. Say the word if you like. You've just got a little bit of B now, haven't you, in the foreground? There we go, that's better. Um, you can protect, you could do a big move. I'm gonna have to do a small move because I'm quite close to the camera. But when I say filament, you need to do this. Like arms up, fists, that's important. Filament, because that's the, these bits, yeah, the stalky bits with the anthers on top. When I say anther, do this with your hands. Yeah, because they're the anthers that make the pollen with the sperm in. It's kind of like pollen grains being given off. When I say stamen, then we go, because stamen is the filament and the anther all together. Filament, anther, stamen. You'd have to do the sounds. Um, the top of our heads, we're gonna say is the sticky stigma. Yeah, the female bit where the pollen has to go to. So when I say stigma, you gotta pay head. And the, the ovary, well, in this model of ours, if our, sticky, if our head is our sticky stigma, then the pollen would land on our head and then the pollen grain would, like, like a horror film, burrow through our brain. So we'll say the ovary is below the stigma, so the ovary is going to be our mouth. So the ovary, when I say ovary, you have to do this. Okay, right, let's do this. Mm, filament. Anther. Stamen. Stigma. Ovary, stigma, filament, stamen, uh, anther, ovary, stigma, stamen, stigma, stamen, anther, ovary. Okay, let's add a few more in. Um, the ovules are inside the ovary. The ovules aren't quite the egg. The egg is like inside the ovule, but it's, we can sort of say that it's the ovules, these little like yellow things that you can see here in the ovary that get fertilized by the pollen. They are what turn into the seeds. So ovule is in the ovary. So you know the ovule has to be this. Stick, do an ovary and then stick your tongue out. So that's the ovules inside the ovary. The other word we need to learn, oh, biologist. This sticky bit at the top is a stigma, the bottom bit, the bulb like bit is the ovary with the ovules in it. This bit in the middle has a name. It's called the style. That's a name just for what I, I don't know. I'm not a biologist. It just looks like a bit of green in the middle, but it's the style. So if our head is a stigma and our mouth is the ovary, obviously the style has to be our nose. I have found out in previous lessons, I can move every bit of my body except my nose. Try and move your style now. It's literally only my, move on my nose on my face isn't moving. Anyway. That's his style. <laughs> okay, and oh yes, sepal. These little green bits here. Yeah, they've got a cool job. They protect the bud. You know, you now our plant buds are green. That's why, because the sepal is surrounding the, the the flower to protect it. And then the sepal's part. So our sepal move is going to be hands next to your neck and do a kind of like fishy, like jazz hands. Sepal. You should sing that at the same time. Sepal. Okay, have we got everything? Oh, should I push you? No, let's let's do it. We'll leave it there. Okay, you ready? Um, sepal. Sepal. Uh, style. Ovule. Stamen. Stigma. Uh, ovary. Ovule. Filament. Anther. Stamen. Ovule. Sepal. Uh, style. Stamen. Anther. Stigma. Ovule. Style. Ovary. Sepal. Sepal. Protecting the bud. Anther. Pollen going off. Stamen. Stigma. 
Those are the two I get confused. Filament! And one last ovule. There you go. The one that I was debating telling you, didn't tell the Facebook lot this, the only other word you need to know for GCSE is uh, carpal. The carpal is the stigma and the style and the ovary all together. Just that big long bit in the middle, like the female bit, I suppose. So that's the carpal. What are we gonna do for carpal? Just, I don't know. Anyway, you do. we're not gonna use the word carpal for the rest of the lesson, but there you go. You've got the full set now. So what do these actually look like on actual plants? Cause this is all very well, but you're saying, Lara, I've never seen a plant that looks like this in my life. Well, let's have a look at a rose first of all. See if you can name these bits of a rose for me. Um, here we are. So how many of these, how, what, how many of these bits would you have been able to name before and how many can you name now? Well, I reckon straight away, admittedly it's slightly old now this rose, but you can, you can probably see some little green stalks with some like big brown bits on the end. Can you remember the name for the green stalk and the brown bit? The filament and the anther at the end, which is producing the pollen. So all together you would call that thing the stamen. And where's the stigma? Well, I reckon it's these little bits in the middle, isn't it? I need a, some sort of toothpick, don't I? But these little dry bits in the middle that don't have any brown bits, I think they're the sticky stigma. So pollen would have to move from this brown anther onto the sticky stigma and then would bury down into the ovary, which is down here. See? I was, I've only, I only found this one rose in my garden, so... Um, I haven't pulled it apart, but since this is the last lesson, let's get inside it and have a look. So plants do sometimes self-pollinate. That means the pollen from one anther just goes straight onto the stamen of the same flower, uh, the stigma of the same flower, but not usually. That's not usually what they want to do. So we looked at last week why genetic diversity is a good thing. Um, so if obviously if a flower is pollinating itself, it's only got its own genes. So if a bug really, if a disease like, injured one flower it would injure all of them so one plant you know what I mean you look, watch last week's lesson it's good to have a bit of ge genetic diversity so tea. there we go so I've cut across it's not a good time to do a, a lesson on um, plants but you can probably just about see that there's something going on in there there's some well there would have been a seed eventually if I hadn't picked the poor thing apart under here as well is a very important bit called the nectary um which we'll talk about when we talk about this guy. My mum always told me that these were called fairy nettles. They're non-stinging nettles. She called them fairy nettles because if you look underneath them, you can just see, look, some little fairy footprints where the fairies have been walking. Uh, mum, I'm so sorry, that's not true. These are called white dead nettles. Those brown bits are the anther again. And the, you could just see, it kind of looks like a, um, it looks like a, snake's tongue yeah there you go can you see that white bit sort of poking out in between all the that's slightly longer than the anther that is the sticky stigma so this plant is amazing uh, if you're a country bumpkin like me if you grew up in the sticks you know get an get, check with an adult before you do this okay don't pick one that's covered in dogweed but if you pick the flower of a white dead nettle and suck the bottom mm, that's really sweet because it's full of nectar so we're gonna talk now when we do our activity about the difference between flowers that want to be pollinated by the wind and flowers that want to be pollinated by animals. So pollination means this pollen grain traveling from the anther and landing onto the stigma. So obviously that starts the pollen tube coming down here and the seed growing and makes, means fertilization happens. So pollination has to happen to grow a new seed. So there's, two main ways that this pollen can land on this stigma. It can be blown by the wind, or it can be put there by animals. So the fairy nettle, the white dead nettle, has evolved to be pollinated by animals. Um, the reason it's quite deep is because it wants, well, it's evolved to be pollinated by creatures that have really long tongues. So a fuzzy little bee or a moth bumblebee would come along here, stick its tongue right down into the bottom of the white dead nettle to get all that delicious nectar. The plant has evolved to produce that lovely sweet juice just to attract the bee, because then the bee's furry little body rubs up against the anther and gets some pollen grains on it, and then it flies to another flower, and we've seen how close the sticky stigma is to the anther. So um, the bee goes to the next flower and rubs up against the stigma and some of the pollen grains from the last flower go onto the stigma and pollen tube goes down. Bob's your uncle, you've got a new 
very little. So yeah, try that. Prove it to yourselves that what I say is true. Okay, let's do our activity and learn about what wind pollinated plants do then. So have you got a piece of paper, um, a plate full of sort of slightly big grains like lentils or oats or rice or something like that, and a plate full of powder um, and some coloured pens. So what I'd like you to do, I've put mine in a baking tray. I'm sorry, you didn't get much warning, but um, we are going to do a bit of sprinkling. What I'd like you to do, please, is to draw two stigma. I'm going to draw some bird's eye view stigma on my piece of paper. So I'll do one stigma over here, just a bird's eye view, and one stigma right over here. Have them quite far apart. Little shout out at this point to my lurkers. Uh, I know that Peter, you are watching and lurking. Mohammed, you are as well. I'm going to say that this stigma is wind pollinated. Don't worry about if you can't keep up with the writing. I'm not worried about you writing. You just uh, do the activity. You can always write later, can't you? 